my husband and I lead Bright City Church in Durham, North Carolina, and our church is a plant. Our church is less than four years old, and when the pandemic hit, our church was only a year and a half old. And so leading a church plant through a pandemic is a great way to expose all of your control issues. And that's exactly what happened to me. How would you define what does control look like? What are the different facets of control that we can see in our lives? Yeah, so it's important to understand that control manifests in our lives in actually two ways. The first is this desire to exert our will on things, you know, in an absolute way. I wish I could fix this situation. I wish I could make this happen. I wish I could control the decisions that this person is making. And that's how we typically think about control. But control is also about how it makes us feel feel, the, the feeling of being empowered versus feeling out of control. And very often that feeling is actually what we're after. And that's one of the things I dig into in this chapter on the illusion of control, how it helps us to feel like we're in control of situations where we actually are not. But when you think you're in control, whether or not you are, it actually really helps you to feel better in the interim. So a lot of us are really after just that feeling. And you know, one thing I like that you shared in your book, you talked about there was a, a moment where you needed the control of understanding that there was a hurricane coming through and this control was mm -hmm. tapping in to information. Can you unpack that for us a little bit? Because some people need yeah. that, you know, t digging into the news to feel that they're actually somewhat in control. Yeah, so I look at the different ways that we try to exert control and, and feel control in the world. And the number one that, that we we kind of overlook, but it's actually the most common, and it makes sense because it's in Genesis 3, is knowledge. You know, Adam and Eve, they reached to, to have control in Genesis 3 by eating from a tree of knowledge. And that tends to be our go-to when we feel out of control is we take our control issues to the internet instead of to God. And we start researching and, you know, we're looking at what's going on in the news or, or what is what does the data say? This is how so many of us responded to the pandemic as we were, you know, trying to find out what, what does this virus do and, and where is it spreading and, and how do I keep myself safe? And so this is a really common and important to understand that when you are doing that, you're having a control response. You are going to knowledge, you're going to information to empower you and give you a sense of certainty and give you a sense of predictability that unfortunately it just cannot provide. And through that, that's where a lot of anxiety comes into play. So can you talk to us a little bit how like anxiety is like the symptom of control? Mm -hmm. so a lot of people aren't realizing like this is why you're feeling anxiety. I mean, anxiety is at an all time high. We've seen a lot of things with mental health issues since the pandemic. Can you talk for a moment about anxiety and its relationship to control? Yeah, so I just mentioned Genesis 3, and in Genesis 3, Adam and Eve, they reach for control by eating from this fruit, and then they experience immediate consequences. They immediately experience anxiety. They imme immediately experience shame. They immediately experience division between them and God. And unfortunately, this moment becomes a blueprint for all of creation, where all of us are now, in a sense, doomed to reenact this, this grasp for control, you know, hoping that it will empower us. We, we do this again and again every day. We're reenacting this moment. But unfortunately, what we are also reenacting is its consequences. And so it's, it's not that this is an if, it's, it's a win. When you reach for control to rescue you or to empower you, you are going to experience those same consequences of anxiety, of, of shame, of, of relational division. And we experience this most often with anxiety. Whenever you try to control something you cannot control, it creates anxiety. And very often we, we miss that link because we blame the thing. We say, I feel this way because of the pandemic. I feel this way because the person that I love is making these decisions. And that is true to some extent. But what is ratcheting up your anxiety is actually trying to control a situation that you cannot control. And that is what is exacerbating your anxiety even more. And that was really, really helpful for me to understand because we get stuck in this cycle of feeling anxiety and reaching for control to soothe that anxiety. And it actually makes it worse.
Mm, that is so true. It's like even what you're describing reminds me of like codependency, where it's just like we're trying to soothe, we're trying to help, but it's actually it's taking a toll on us. And Sharon, I just want to talk, you talk for a moment because you're, you're, you're a leader, you have a church plant, and you mentioned in your book about how you notice even with power that there was mm -hmm. some control. Can you talk about that? Because I think a lot of people are right there, don't want to admit it, but we need to dive mm -hmm. in and go to that place. Yeah, power is the more common form of control that we're all familiar with, but we think of it as someone who's creating a culture of fear, someone who is domineering, someone who is mm -hmm. aggressive, and I wouldn't have seen myself as a controlling leader, but I realized how many times I was trying to engineer outcomes, how many times I was trying to make my staff make certain decisions, and I wasn't being mean, and I wasn't yelling, yelling at them, but they couldn't say no to me. And what I discovered over time, and, and this is another cost of control that we see in Genesis 3 and that we reenact again and again, is whenever you try to control people, it will break your relationship with them. And this, this again, has, has been game-changing for me because I also lead the church with my husband. And so there have been times where I thought I knew this is the decision that we as leaders should make. This is, this is where we should go as a church. And I can coerce my husband, I can manipulate him, I can pressure him, I can make him make a certain decision, but it will come with a cost. And I might not see that cost today, I might not see it tomorrow, I might not see it for 10 years, but it will fracture my intimacy in my relationship with him. And so that was also a, a, a huge epiphany for me to understand that link. Sharon, one of the things that we see a lot in society today is this kind of fractured, uh, we're, we're in our, our different factions, our different groups, and we immediately, there's knee-jerk reactions to everything that happens in government, everything that happens in politics or social issues. Is that a form of control? We sort of dismiss the other side all the time and say, this is, this is my group, this is my, this is, uh, we're, we're the ones that have the, the truth in this, and we kind of dismiss the other side. A hundred percent. So I mentioned that knowledge and information, we go to those to help us to feel in control, to help us to feel certainty and predictability. But we also use knowledge and information to try to control other people. We have this illusion in our mind that if I can just present the right argument, you know, the right information, the right statistics, and I can download that into another person's brain, that they will suddenly change their mind and agree with me. And I have just described 99% of comments sec sec sections on social media. Like that's what people are doing is, is saying, well, you just haven't thought of this. Like you, you, haven't, you haven't read this blog or, or seen this study. And if I just share this with you, it's going to change your mind. And that's how we are approaching one another. Really, this is again about control. And because of that, that's one of the reasons why our nation is just fracturing is we are trying to control one another with our knowledge and our information. And the fact of the matter is it simply doesn't work. Like I've, I've never encountered a comment section in which someone said, well, have you seen this study? And the other person said, I haven't. Oh, I'm completely wrong. Now I agree with you. That has never happened. <laughs> knowledge and information simply do not have that power. And when we use it that way, we just break everything around us. In the moment when I realize I'm trying to control and I think, well, I just shouldn't, I realize th this, isn't, this isn't motivating me to, to behave differently. And so part of what did help me to let go of control was just realizing the cost of control but also realizing that, that God empowers us. You know, he doesn't say just lay down flat on the ground and let me do all the work, but he has empowered us and he has commissioned us in the world. And part of the reason that, that we, we gravitate towards control is that we have let go of the actual power that God has given us to influence in the world. Well, can you break down what agency is and how it gives us back our own influence and power? Yeah, so one thing that I discovered is that God does not give us control, but he does give us agency. And agency is not a word that you find in the Bible, but it's it's a concept that 
that was helpful to me in describing what we see in scripture, which is that God gives us free will. You know, he, in the garden of Eden, we see that Adam and Eve are not in control, but they're, they're not puppets. They're, they're not robots. They're not prisoners. They, they have choice. They have purpose and they partner with God in that to influence themselves and to influence the world around them. And that's how I would define agency is it's this power to influence, but while also honoring our limitations and control doesn't want any limitations. Adam and Eve did not want any limitations, but agency honors the fact that I am operating within a certain set of parameters that I, I, and I want to honor those. That's what agency is.